Ah, the beach. A state of peace and harmony. Eden, really. Paradise past peril. Haven here in hell. Where saved souls are tight twixt terra turns bane bodies bare. There from wolves hide lambs and high the hellbound hares. It's funny, there's such a fine line between madness and sanity, hope and hopelessness. Meet Hatter, the founder of the beach, that refuge where the unfortunate denizens of Borderland can lay their hats and escape from their miserable situations. That is, only until their visas expire once more and they must venture back out into the outside world of parallel Tokyo and enter themselves into harrowing death games where the prize is the chance to live another day. And the losers, well, they die. But Hatter, yes, Hatter built the beach. This mysterious, bewitching man somehow turned the tables on the Game Masters and provided comfort to so many beleaguered beings. Why? Well, I don't know. Perhaps he just believed in hope when no one else did. If or then again, maybe he did it all for himself. I suppose this is the question we must answer in today's video. Why did Hatter create the beach? Alice in Borderland went from 0 to 60 real quick, when it shifted arcs from what I would call its roaming phase, in which Arisu and his various companions were traveling through Borderland, to its beach phase, which announced itself rather boisterously with the entrance of Hatter, who was kind enough to explain the mission of the beach and how the playing cards in Borderland work to Arisu and Usagi. He had this big and colorful personality. He was larger than life and seemingly starting to go a bit mad. It almost felt like we met Hatter at a point in which he was beginning to lose it. Borderland was beginning to get to him, and he was becoming delusional. But I digress. From his introduction onward, it was rather hard to read his intentions, a fact made even more difficult by the fact that he was one of those sunglasses inside type of guys. Nonetheless, it's important to note that Hatter wanted very badly to get out of Borderland. A desire which we noted in our video on Shishia might represent that someone is sane and hasn't fully lost their humanity. Hatter had aspirations and dreams back in real Tokyo. He was seemingly a functioning member of society. Even if he didn't have the perfect life in real Tokyo, he was doing well enough to not want to abandon his world and ne'er return. So he needed to get out of Borderland. And it kind of seemed like the beach was somewhat of a scheme Hatter concocted to trick the members living there to collect all of the cards for him so he could do so. Every action Hatter took can be viewed as working to advance his scheme. Why did he show up here and protect Arisu from Aguni and Naragi? Better yet, why did Hatter take such great effort to keep the peace at the beach? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? If it collapsed, his chances to leave Borderland would as well. Here, he invited Arisu to join the beach's executive members because of his potential. You can see how between his standing up for the low-ranking beach members and giving people promotions and perks, he endeared himself to his followers, all the while doing so would benefit him. Hatter played the game that all clever tyrants do. He won the hearts of the people by promising them the world at his hands while reaping the rewards of their dedicated labors. I mean, everything he told beach members was aimed at convincing them that the only way anyone would ever have a chance of leaving Borderland was if they committed themselves to the beach's mission. He persuaded people into believing that when they were collecting cards, they were doing so for themselves. Now, each time all of the playing cards are collected, only one person can leave Borderland. And beach rules stipulated that the person ranked number one at the time the cards are gathered is the one who would get to go home. But Hatter made beach members believe that even if they weren't number one at the moment, eventually they would be. 
ピーチの同志諸君全員が出国できる日は必ず訪れる。ハッター offered Beach members what some of you would probably call false hope because it was very unlikely that all of them or even most of them would ever get out of Borderland alive. And you probably would also claim that he did so for his own benefit, so they would be motivated to work for his freedom. You can see that his followers were cultish in their behavior. They would have probably even given their lives for Hatter outside of the death games. But here's the thing hope is a complicated thing, and Hatter's galvanizing oratory wasn't so clearly a moral wrong. これは恐怖との戦争だ諸君には困難に打ち勝つ勇気がある It was almost as if Hatter engaged in the same type of grift that many self-help gurus do You know, spit out inspiring but mostly empty language Fluff that makes you feel good but which is void of substantive thought However, who says that doesn't work? If by work we mean makes people function better Yeah, Hatter was drugging the Beach members with his fancy speeches, but even though he might have been using them, we can't say that there was no quid pro quo there. The people did seem to be relatively happy, no? Is there even such a thing as false hope? Think about it. If you gain hope, does it matter how you gained it? Can it not still inspire you to go on and survive? These people at the beach were mired in despair. They needed hope any way they could get it. Arisu and Usagi are actually pretty strong willed, all things considered, but some others there probably weren't, and Hatter might have helped them, and he might have wanted to help them in this way. From the minute he walked into the abandoned resort that would become the beach, he did seem to have the intention of building it into something that could give people hope and help people. Hope. Something that you create in yourself, not something blessed upon you from the outside, is the only way out of despair sometimes. And where you may say, well, Ben, giving them false hope might cause them to do stupid things and put themselves in danger. To that, I would probably respond, all of these people were screwed anyway, right? They had almost no control over Borderland or their destinies in it. They might have died, or for those remaining, may still die, no matter what they did. So, yeah, a little contrived solace could have served them well. However, forget everything I've said so far pertaining to Hatter's motivations. Here's the thing. I do think that Hatter's purpose in creating the beach was to collect all of the playing cards for himself. However, I don't think he wanted to collect the cards because he was desperate to leave Borderland. And here's the twist I think he did it because, in his sick mind, he felt that accomplishing the unaccomplishable would make his followers see him as a mythical hero. <laughs> Remember how I said that it seemed like we met Hatter at a time in which he was starting to lose his mind? Well, this is awkward, but I actually think that's wrong. I think Hatter was always a madman. He was always insane. Back in real Tokyo, he did the exact same thing to his club employees that he did to the members of the beach later. He used his grandiose rhetoric and rage to force people to bow to his madness and live in fear amidst his chaos. We don't get so many opportunities to see it in the show because he's only in it for a few episodes. But I believe that Hatter was a narcissistic, megalomaniacal lunatic who only wanted to return to real Tokyo to prove he could, and thus be truly deified by his followers. That's all he cared about his image. He didn't care about people's lives, he had no empathy. <laughs> Sorry for the blurring here, but yeah, just imagine a lot of blood. Like, a lot. Wow. Anyway, the show tries to trick us into believing that this was the moment that Hatter went mad, that he lost himself in his schemes. No, he was always mad, 
and from the beginning was always his intention to make himself into an epic hero in the eyes of his followers and kill anyone who tried to ruin his plans. Yeah, maybe he offered Beach members some hope, but for the most part, I kind of suspect that people went along with the worshipping of him out of fear. Now you might say, but American Ben, what about the hat shop flashback? Indeed, he seemed normal at that hat shop. But remember, this is after his host club imploded due to his demented behavior. Madness doesn't always show. Oftentimes, laws and societal norms force madmen to restrain their behaviors. Borderland is where the full extent of human neuroses are on display. The brutality of human nature is laid bare. And while the Hatter that we met in Borderland may have long been out of his mind, he was still at a turning point. He was beginning to give up on his illusions of grandeur. My first reaction to this little tea party was to think that here Hatter was beginning to go mad and fall for his own scheme. But now that my theory is that he was always mad, I more believe that Hatter's odd behavior here was indicative of a man that was, well, drunk, but also ready to let go. He knew his death was coming. <laughs> Niragi and the other militants couldn't be held in check for much longer. And once they rose up, any hopes Hatter had to collect all of the cards and prove his heroism would be dashed. And without that purpose to aim for, he had no reason to go on. Hey, crazy people have hopes and dreams too. Right before his death, as he prepared to enter a death game, Aguni accused Hatter of lying to the people of the beach. Beach no member was Aguni didn't seem to understand that his friend Hatter didn't really lie. I mean, Hatter's madness was made worse in Borderland, but I don't think he ever thought that he was lying about anything. He was a true believer in his own greatness. He believed in the sanctity of the beach up until the charade was about to break. Hatter had tears in his eyes here, not because there was no hope for everyone else, but because there was no hope for him at this point. But he did at least go out with a small consolation. He didn't ever enter that death game. He forced a goonie to shoot him instead, thus choosing how he died. See, I'm not sure he ever actually controlled the beach. There were always eyes there watching him, higher powers influencing him. The beach was always meant to happen. He was just used to build it, and Hatter probably knew somewhere deep down that his own power was tenuous. But he didn't let the game masters kill him. Well, they kind of still did, I suppose, but not in a game, so a small victory for Hatter nonetheless. When Hatter first entered the beach, he stated his purpose for it with a quote from Gandhi. Of course, there's no evidence that Gandhi ever said this. The quote of his that came closest to that was, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. We need not wait to see what others do, end quote. And yes, this still speaks to a similar idea as the quote that Hatter gave, but it's more specific because it implies that not only can we choose our actions, but that we can change our natures, which cause them. Hatter didn't change his nature in Borderland, he embraced it. And I can't help but wonder if he even could have changed it. I can't help but wonder if any of us can. But there's an extent to which I believe that we can cultivate lighter and darker sides of our natures. We have a chance to be saved if we hold out hope 
through despair. Something, of course, so much easier said than done. Hatter failed to cultivate the better part of his nature. He deserved to die in Borderland where a madman like him belongs. But it's people like Kuina, in contrast to villains like Hatter, who truly beat the game. Because despite all the despair confronting her, she hasn't yet let Borderland bring out her darker nature. If anything, she's let it awaken her better nature, and perhaps for that she'll make it out yet, and find that the world is not so bad, and indeed life is worth living. Anyways, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. The radiator in this old New York City building is starting to act up and make noise, so I really got to bring this to a close here. Um, comment down below. My favorite thing about this channel is reading your thoughts uh, and learning from them. Um, for now, oh, no, no, no. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe, damn it. Um, hit that notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, Generation Ochi. Peace.